Good evening. You're watching the main news on HKIBC. I'm Raymond Yang. Here are tonight's top stories. Security Chief Chris Tang says there's been a 100% conviction rate in national security cases so far. Beijing's top man on Hong Kong affairs, Xia Baolong, arrives for a six-day visit. And China's exports surged in March, ending five months of decline. Security Chief Chris Tang has disclosed that all those tried so far for violating the national security law have been convicted. Leading officials in the legal sector added that national security trials have been fair. Macy Moore reports. Top officials and political heavyweights were present at RTHK's launch of a radio and TV show on the national security law. Speaking at the ceremony, Secretary for Security Chris Tang revealed that the conviction rates in national security cases so far stands at 100 percent. In the past three years, 250 people were arrested for national security violations, Tang said. As of last month, 151 of them were charged. All 71 whose trials have ended were convicted. Tang said the national security law affects only a small number of people. Maggie Yang, the director of public prosecutions, denied that the government has ulterior motives when it charges a person under the national security law. She said to ensure a fair trial, prosecutors will not hide any evidence that may benefit defendants. Justice Chief Paul Lam dismissed concerns on whether defendants in national security cases were given a fair trial or the right to choose their own lawyers. He said the rule of law was observed in all national security cases. Hong Kong University law professor Albert Chan said some trials had no jury because having jurors who disagree with the national security law does not match the legislative intent. Maisie Mock, HKIBC. A man who was granted bail has now been remanded after helping a fellow suspect flee the court. The alleged drug trafficker who masterminded the escape remains on the run. In a daring scheme which resembled a movie plot and left the police red-faced, a suspected drug trafficker escaped custody on Monday by swapping identities with another person in remand. While 37-year-old Chen Shi Hua remains on the run, the man whose identity he assumed now faces extra months behind bars. Appearing in West Kowloon Magistracy today, Lam King Ho was charged with misleading a police officer. According to the prosecution, the unemployed 24-year-old was due to be released on $500 bail over a domestic violence case. As he was processed at the holding cell, Lam was approached by Chen, who offered $20,000 for his personal details and his identification wristband. Lam took up the offer and was given a phone number to follow up on the payment. Chan then managed to deceive a police officer with Lam's information and left the court. Magistrate Jeffrey C. blasted Lam for letting a criminal suspect walk free over personal gains. He also denied Lam's bail application, citing his poor sense of law compliance. The defendant has been remanded until late May. 20,000 people could be making their way to Hong Kong under the government's talent recruitment drive. Around 8,000 of them are eligible dependents who, according to Labour Chief Chris Sun, will also contribute to the SAR. He said the response for the top talent pass scheme far exceeded expectations, with applications still on the rise since its launch three months ago. Half of the 12,000 people who were granted two-year visas are under 30 years old, while 4,600 graduated from universities in the United States, Australia, Britain and Canada. A review is underway to expand the list of eligible universities 
to attract more professionals. It's been a busy day for China's top official on Hong Kong at the start of a six-day visit. Xiao Baolong's itinerary included meetings with Chief Executive John Lee and executive councillors. Macy Mok reports. Xia Baolong greeted the press when he left the airport this morning, accompanied by Chief Secretary Eric Chan. The director of the Hong Kong and Macau Affairs Office then boarded a private minivan. Police outriders escorted his motorcade to the Foreign Ministry Commissioner's Office, where Xia and Chief Executive John Lee had lunch. The next stop was government headquarters, where the director met officials of the Committee for Safeguarding National Security, as well as executive councillors. Ex-co members Margaret Leung Ko, Regina Eep, and Arthur Lee were among those seen arriving in Admiralty. During his stay in Hong Kong, Xia will attend a National Security Education Day event on Saturday. He's also expected to meet members of the public and visit the northern metropolis. Lawmaker Priscilla Leung, who attended the launch of a national security show, described Xia's visit as significant, as it's taking place at a time when the city is returning to normal after COVID. Maisie Mock, HKIBC. Chief Executive John Lee met the press this evening, but refused to disclose what was discussed with Xia Baolong. But Lee noted that Xia will have a better understanding of Hong Kong, as this is his longest visit to the city. The chief executive said Xia was satisfied with the government's work in the past nine months. China's exports in March jumped almost 15 percent to an eight-month high. This comes as factory activity returned to full capacity amid rising orders from Southeast Asia. Chloe Fong reports. China's exports in last month surprised the markets as they ended a five-month losing streak. In U.S. dollar terms, exports in March shot up 14.8 percent year-on-year to an eight-month high of 315.6 billion U.S. dollars. The markets had estimated a 7 percent fall after a 6.8 percent drop in the combined January to February period. Imports, meanwhile, fell just 1.4 percent to 227.4 billion U.S. dollars last month, much smaller than forecasts of a 5 percent to 6 percent decline. Imports in the first two months of the year contracted 10.2 percent. China's trade surplus widened to 88.2 billion U.S. dollars in March, more than double from a year earlier. Southeast Asia remained China's largest trading partner, with imports and exports jumping 16.1 percent in the first quarter. China's exports to the European Union rose 3.4 percent year-on-year. Beijing's surprising performance came as global trade remains weak. The World Trade Organization predicts growth of only 1.7 percent this year because of geopolitical tensions, inflation and financial market uncertainties. Looking ahead, China's General Administration of Customs is optimistic about its trade prospects as its economy improves, despite weak external demand and global uncertainties. Chloe Fong, HK IBC. Four firefighters were killed and 13 others seriously injured when a building collapsed during a blaze in the southern Pakistan city of Karachi. The extent of the damage was visible by daylight, several hours after the fire broke out in a garment factory. Reports from the port city say the firefighters were on the verge of putting out the flames when the building collapsed. Officials are checking to see whether adjacent buildings are structurally safe. A Category 5 cyclone is expected to lash northwest Australia within hours. For me, anything above a Category 3 is cause for concern and that really everyone should take it very, very seriously, which is what I've done at home. My husband and I have made our house and home as, as safe as we possibly can. So um, if everyone does the right thing, then um, it should be OK. 
Cyclone Ilsa is expected to batter a 600-kilometer stretch of sparsely populated land, with winds of up to 315 kilometers an hour. The area includes Port Hedland, the world's biggest iron ore exporting hub. Abnormally high tides and widespread floods are expected. Many people have fled the region, while those staying back are taking all precautions. Inflation in the United States has eased, providing some relief to Americans who have been struggling with soaring prices. Certainly, we cook more at home than we ever have uh, due to the rising costs. And you, you do look for the occasional deals and, the, and value when you can, that's for sure. Certainly, uh, prices have risen. And uh, you can modify what you make at home to counterbalance some of that, I, I believe. U.S. inflation dropped to 5 percent from a high of 9.1 percent in June last year. Prices in March edged up at its slowest pace in two years. Despite lower inflation and warnings of a recession, the Federal Reserve is expected to raise interest rates next month. Hong Kong's main stock benchmark ended flat today, with Alibaba in the spotlight. The e-commerce conglomerate plunged more than 5 percent on news that Japanese tech investor SoftBank plans to sell its stake in the company. Alibaba paired its losses on bargain hunting and ended the day 2 percent lower. AI developer SenseTime tumbled 7.6 percent after Beijing hinted about regulating artificial intelligence products. The day's biggest loser was mainland developer Sunak, which plunged 55.5% on resuming trade after a suspension of more than one year. The company announced a debt restructuring plan. Now let's take a look at the markets. The Hang Seng ended the day up by 34 points. The top 10 active stocks, Tencent gained $6, Alibaba was down $1.90, while the tracker fund was up four cents. Sense time was down 24 cents, while JD.com was down $3.10. The forex trading against the Hong Kong dollar, the euros at 8.64, the pound sterling 9.82, while the Australian dollar at 5.29. Finally, in Europe, the London FTSE has picked up seven points. On to the weather now. It will be overcast with sunny intervals tomorrow. Temperatures will range between 22 and 28 degrees. Expect warmer weather over the weekend. Now let's take a look at the weather around the world. That's our main news for Thursday night. Join us for more news at 11. I'm Raymond Yeung. Good night.